Hello and welcome to the shop. Tonight I have a very special blank that was sent to me by a friend of mine, Franklin Kelly. And this blank, well actually there's two of them, but I'm only going to turn part of one blank. I've already cut the top one to the perfect size for a Sierra pin kit. And you can see the spalting that's occurring in this blank. Now this is a very special piece of wood because this piece of wood is from the aftermath of Hurricane Michael. I'm going to go ahead and get it tubed and prepped for the lathe and we're going to turn it but there's something else that's very special about this. I am going to write a little note and I'm going to explain that this blank was given to me by Franklin. I'm going to explain where the blank came from out of the Hurricane Michael cleanup and I am going to turn a pin and donate it to Pins for Troops at the Mid-Ohio Valley Pin Turners Gathering this September 2019. I'm getting ready to glue the tube into this blank and I'm going to use epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy. You mix equal amounts together and it will glue the tube into this blank and I guarantee it will not come out. Now the reason why I'm doing this, I'm switching to epoxy from CA and what that means is I now have to prep blanks the night before so the epoxy has plenty of time to dry. But this is a pin I made a while back and my son wanted it so I gave it to him. And look at this. This is the brass tube. It's coming out of the pin. The entire pin is coming apart because the CA, what happens is, now I've not had this happen with a wood blank, but on an acrylic blank, uh, I've noticed on some of my pins, you'll see it'll shrink away from the nib or the cap. The, the acrylic will shrink a little bit over time, but when it does, it is the CA glue is giving loose and it's pulling away from the blank and the blanks are basically sliding off of the tubes. No longer am I gonna mess with medium or thick CA glue for gluing up pin blanks. Uh, I want to use something that I know is not gonna give loose. I got the Hurricane Michael blank chucked up on the lathe and with the spalting, I really expected this wood to be somewhat punky, but as I took it to the disc sander to clean up the uh, ends of the blank so I could square them, it was actually relatively tough. So this wood, uh, it, it hasn't got to the point where it's really rotting yet, which is nice. I think it's gonna turn uh, very nicely and I think it's gonna make a really beautiful blank. This blank's absolutely beautiful. And as I suspected, it turned quite nicely. It looks like it's a piece of oak. Uh, I did not have any issue with tearing out or any of the issues that you have normally with punky wood. It just turned so smooth, cut nicely, and it looks, the surface looks amazing. I'm wondering if, um, instead of spalting, I'm wondering if this is wood staining. Like if wood is uh, submerged in water, it will absorb the moisture. And then when the moisture evaporates, the dirt that, and, that was in the water will stay in the wood. And I'm wondering if this is more staining, but uh, either way, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Let me go ahead and get the sandpaper out. We'll sand this up and uh, we'll see how it looks. I am not gonna record any of the sanding. Once again, that is so boring. So we'll get it sanded. I'll come back and show you how it looks right before we put a finish on it. I finished sanding the blank. It turned out amazing. Just look at that surface. It's beautiful. I've gone ahead and put it on my nonstick bushings. I've got the lathe turned down as low as it will go, and we're going to go ahead and apply a CA finish. Now take a look at that. With just one layer of CA, this is going to be a gorgeous pin. I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to put four more layers of thin and then we'll come back. We're going to start off with three layers of medium and we'll see how it looks. I will uh, show you guys what it looks like once I finish applying all the coats of CA. I just finished putting the CA on this blank. It looks amazing. I took the nonstick bushings off and put the standard bushings back on. Before I did, I ran the blank over to my disc sander, put it back on the sanding jig and squared the ends. And I didn't, when I say squared the ends, I didn't get aggressive. I just lightly touched the sanding disc. And the idea is I want to take any fingernail of CA off the end of the blank because uh, on those uh, nonstick bushings, they're conical in shape. 
So what happens is the CA can kind of roll over the end and you get a little build up and you don't get a nice fit on your pin components. So by, by kissing the wheel uh, with the blank, I can square it back up, get a nice flat surface, and I'll have a beautiful fit and finish when I put this blank on a, uh, on a kit. What I'm gonna do now is micro mesh the blank. Uh, I don't think I'll record that process. You've seen me do it many times, uh, but I'll come back in a few minutes when the micro mesh is done. We'll take a look at it and then we'll put some Renaissance wax on the blank. I think that the CA finish turned out really nice on this blank. I'm ready to get a little Renaissance wax and uh, polish it up with that and then we'll get the buffing wheels on and uh, see what we can make this blank look like. I'm ready to press my blank into a pin kit. Take a quick peek at it here, and I'm looking for where I would like to um, put the uh, clip, and I'm thinking right there, because see, it's so intricate. Actually, I think we'll flip it over. I'm gonna run the clip right here, because that's a nice, just an oaky looking area, and you, you can see all of the cool uh, discoloration of the blank. So that's gonna be where we put our, our clip. So let's get it applied. Okay. Put the clip in here. Let me flip my hands around. Okay. I think we can probably back this off. And there we go. Close that down one more. I'm going to give this just a tap, just ever so slightly. And I want to adjust because I let it slide. There we go. Just want to make sure I line it up properly and. I actually let go of the, uh, whoops, the blank. There we are. Okay, looks like we've got a nice fit. Oh yeah. Let me get a focus for you. There you go. Got a super nice fit. Now, I know some of you guys are saying, why don't you mount your, your pin press? Guys, I don't want to mount my pin press. I know I, every time I do this and it slips a little bit, I get somebody that says, you should mount your pin press. Well, I tell you, I'll be honest, I don't want my pin press mounted because it's too limiting. I end up going to my club and doing demos. I take this press with me. I go to friends' houses, I'll take my press. Uh, I like to press pins sometimes at this table. Maybe if this table's in use, I might want to press it. I've done it on top of my maker's cart or on my other table or on top of my table saw. I don't want this mounted because it limits me into in what I can do and where I can do it. So I'm okay with a little bit of slippage of the pin press. As long as I'm careful, I get great looking fits like this and I don't have any issues. Let's go ahead and finish this out. We're gonna slide our spring on. I'm gonna slide the cartridge into the nib. We'll bring up our transmission. Nice tight fit. These are a two-part transmission, so make sure it's tight here, and this brass part needs to be tightly threaded as well. So I like to give it a good twist and turn it a couple of times just to get the lubrication. There is a grease inside of there. Get that working. And take a look at that pin. That is a gorgeous pin. Absolutely phenomenal. I love the coloring of that blank. I think this is going to make somebody very happy. Uh, I look forward to uh, putting a little note with it and uh, dropping it off uh, at the uh, Mid Ohio Valley Pin Turners Gathering for Pins for Troops. I really hope you enjoyed spending the day with me. I had a great time turning this pin, and I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. I think it's going to make somebody a great pocket pin. I hope somebody gets as much enjoyment from using this pin as I got from making it and showing you the process. I want to thank you for joining me in the shop. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.